Democratic Republic of Congo, the world's largest cobalt producing country, on the list of the top five world largest copper producing countries, world's second largest rainforest, significant arable land, immense biodiversity, second largest river in Africa, blessed with gold, diamond, lithium, tin oil, tantalum crude oil, timber, coffee, rubber, manganese and the list goes on. Population estimate of over 90 million people with extremely diverse culture and ethnicity. The second largest country in Africa behind Algeria. The land area of DR Congo is comparable in size to Western Europe. Democratic Republic of Congo is possibly the most natural resource rich country in Africa. The country is blessed with extraordinary natural resources including huge hydroelectric potential. The there are a few places on the planet where rivers run as fast and as hard as the Congo does here as it approaches the sea. A hydroelectric power station built here could provide electricity for the whole of Africa. It would produce twice as much power as any other hydro plant on Earth. That is how rich the Congo could be the resources were put to good use. The majority of Dihar Congo residents have not profited from this prosperity. A serious ongoing humanitarian crisis has resulted from a protracted history of conflict, political upheaval, and instability and authoritarian governance. Before the arrival of the Portuguese in the 15th century, an empire known as the Kingdom of Congo dominated the western portion of the Congo and bits of other modern states such as Angola. The Kingdom of Congo was sophisticated, had its own aristocracy and an impressive civil service. When Portuguese traders arrived from Europe in the 1480s, they realized they had stumbled upon a land of vast natural wealth, rich in resources, particularly human resources. The Portuguese quickly find out the supply of slaves would be easier to tap if the interior of the continent was in state of anarchy. They did their utmost to destroy any indigenous political force capable of curtailing their slaving or trading interests. Money and modern weapons were sent to rebels, Congolese armies were defeated, kings were murdered, elites were slaughtered and secession was encouraged. An important document in the Dutch archives cast new light on the Congo-Portuguese War of 1622, usually seen as a signal defeat for Congo. The document shows that after the Portuguese victory over Congo at the Battle of Mumbi, there was a second battle in which Congo forces were victorious and they in fact began the process of reoccupying lands the Portuguese has absorbed in earlier expansion. Like most African countries, Congo was under a European country rule. However, the story of imperialism in Congo is different to other African countries. The interior of the Congo was opened up in the late 19th century by the British-born explorer Henry Morton Stanley. His dreams of free trading association with the communities is met were shattered by the infamous king of the Belgians, Leopold, who act out a vast private empire. Afterwards, Stanley headed south, becoming the first European to reach the Atlantic Ocean via the River Congo. In 1879, he returned to the Congo region on an expedition financed by King Leopold II of Belgium. On February 5, 1885, Belgian King Leopold II established the Congo Free State by brutally seizing the African landmass as his personal possession. Rather than control the Congo as a colony, as other European powers did throughout Africa, Leopold privately owned the region. It is unbelievable that the Democratic Republic of Congo, which is about 77 times bigger than Belgium, was declared a private property of a Belgian king. Leopold's reign over the Congo Free State, however, has become infamous for its brutality. The people of the Congo were forced to labor for valued resources including rubber and ivory to personally enrich Leopold. Estimates vary, but about half the Congolese population died from punishment and malnutrition. Many more suffered from disease and torture. Among those who weren't killed, many were punished by having a hand or foot amputated. The world's largest supply of rubber was found at a time when bicycle and automobile tires and electrical installation had made it a vital commodity in the West. The late Victorian bicycle craze was enabled by the Congolese rubber collected by slave laborers.
The Katanga region is home to an array of minerals ranging from copper, zinc, cassiterite, manganese, coal, gold, cadmium, and uranium. And the country serves as the largest producer of cobalt globally. Cobalt has several uses, like in jet turbine generators, tool materials, pigments, and smartphone batteries. But its major use is in lithium ion batteries. Half of the cobalt produced goes into electric cars. We're talking about 4 to 30 kilos of cobalt per battery. This metal is found all over the world, like in Australia, Canada, China, Cuba, South Africa, the United States, the Philippines. But 70% of the total supply comes from one country, Congo. The country's mining industry is set to gain more influence with the predicted exponential demand growth for electric vehicle batteries, of which cobalt is an essential component. A variety of minerals such as berry, gold, and cartwright can also be found in great quantities west of Lake Kivu, northwest Katanga. Gem quality diamonds and iron ore are found in the south central part of the country, while industrial diamonds are abundant across the central regions. The northeastern part of the country contains gold, coal, and higher ore deposits. Why northwestern region features gold, monazite, and diamonds? Lake Kivu, shared by the DRC and Rwanda, contains a large amount of biogas and methane as a result of volcanic activity and degradation of organic matter at the lake's surface. The latest estimate states that the lake contains up to 60 billion cubic meters of methane gas and 300 billion cubic meters of carbon dioxide that could be transformed into large quantities of natural gas. The coastal region is a particularly prospective area when it comes to hydrocarbon exploration and production. While bauxite and gold can be found onshore, the DRC maritime area holds substantial petroleum deposits. The country currently produces 25,000 barrels of oil a day and proving reserves are estimated at 180 million barrels. However, estimates of total petroleum reserves exceed 5 billion barrels and could reach up to 20 billion barrels. Such a figure would position the DRC as the second largest petroleum holder in sub-Saharan Africa just behind Nigeria. Agriculture and mining are the backbone of DRC economic structure as the former provide two-thirds of available jobs and the latter represent 90% of the country's export revenue. A country so rich in natural resources is also one of the poorest countries in the world. How did this happen? This is a question that is so difficult to answer. In the last 15 years, Chinese companies have bought out North American and European companies mining in Congo. Today, Chinese firms own 15 out of the 19 industrial mines in this country. In exchange for Congo's cobalt, China has promised the country billions in investment in the form of infrastructure, schools and roads. Now, Congo is another example of how stories featuring China never end well. Today, China is leaking blood cobalt into the supply chain of electric vehicles. Chinese companies are buying cobalt from children, encouraging them to participate in the trade of blood batteries. One of the largest cobalt processors in Congo is a company called CDM, or Congo Dongfang Mining. It is a subsidiary of Zhejiang Huayu Cobalt, a Chinese company, of course. Huayu supplies cobalt to electric car makers like Volkswagen. 40% of Huayu's cobalt comes from Congo. In 2016, the Chinese company was called out by an NGO. It was branded a benefactor of child labor. 